Hello everyone, this is Caillou, and I'm once again joined by Bradley Rose, and we're going to be talking about day three of Moxtober. Moxtober is a month-long uh, prompt uh, event, very similar to Inktober. There are 31 prompts, for one for each day of the month, and then you design custom cards based on that prompt, and we review them. Um, so today's prompt uh, was binding. So what were you expecting people to come up with when you saw this prompt? Uh, the first thing I was thinking was the, like, holding someone in place and being trapped, like, arrested and or manacled or things like that. Yeah, I was like, okay, so my thoughts were we're going to see one of two things. One, O-rings, because I think O-rings or pacifism effects are, are, like, just quintessentially binding. Oh, actually, there's three things. Two, like, water knot style effects in blue. And three, though I didn't think there would be that many of these, I was thinking there would be like demon binding style effects mm. um, where, where it's like you have a contract. And while we did, I think, see all three of those, I think this might have been our most diverse uh, Moxtober uh, submission period yet um, in terms of like flavor. So we got some real interesting interpretations out here. Yeah, it turns out there's a lot of definitions for the word binding. So, which card do you want to start off on? All right. Well, let's start off with, uh, you mentioned, like, demon binding type stuff. So let's talk about, uh, well, there's multiple. So let's talk about binding contract. So binding contract is two black black enchantment rare. Enters the battlefield, you get 10 cards. You draw 10 cards. Beginning of your upkeep, you lose 20 life. So go big uh, or go home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, this is uh, like I've seen Final Fortune. That's like a red thing that happens once every few sets. And this is a very black feeling thing. Um, we've also seen like uh, in Magic Origins, there's a, an enchantment that is flavored around Liliana having to choose from modes you haven't chosen and one of them is losing the game this this one's a lot faster it doesn't give you four turns it gives you one turn <laughs> uh so i think very very flavorful feel uh for doing the same kind of thing yeah definitely but it does feel very like feast or famine and i feel like lots of the time if you're playing this you are not planning to get to your next upkeep you're just gonna take those 10 cards and take them all the way to the bank basically yeah yeah if you can uh counter your own triggered upkeep thing then that would be cool i guess you're good you just have 10 cards yep okay so my next card was also something that was uh within the demon binding type thing it's demon child rawe who is two black black for a legendary creature azra warrior um and the interesting thing here is bind at the beginning of your upkeep you can put a minus one minus one counter on this creature if you do, you get to trigger its bind ability, which here is lose one life and draw a card. So essentially, this is pretty powerful. It's a 4-4, four, four, which at any time you can... 4-4 four, four menace, which at any time you can like start trading in for cards slowly. So it's, a real, it's really interesting. I think this also comes back to a little bit of what we were talking about yesterday with... Um, the Or like, sorry, day before yesterday with like for harvest, putting minus one, minus one counters on creatures to get incremental effect. This kind of feels like that, but for a completely different prompt. Yeah, um, this evokes that uh, trade, trade, uh, you know, trade in resources for power. You know, whatever the cost may be, you uh, have a, I guess, a select creatures that you have in the set that are more keen to tap into the infernal and uh, boost themselves up. Or I guess not themselves. You're, the player is. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what is the next card you want to talk about? Uh, let's go for a different flavor of being bound. A bonded watch bot. This is a um, soul bond uh, return, uh, which is cool to see. We haven't seen that since Avicen Restored. As long as Bonded Watchbot is paired with another creature, it gets plus two, plus two, and has Vigilance. Uh, what's, and it has flavor text 
Cat's Day, of course, very cute dog construct. Um, but the the thing that was really flavorful is that when it's not uh, bound to, not paired with another creature, it's a zero one, and there's not a lot of times you're going to be attacking with the zero one. So you are going to sit and stay uh, without needing to have defender until you have uh, their buddy show up, and that's when they you know get up and play. Yeah, I really like I really like this one. It's I, I'm a sucker for cute designs, and this is very much that. Um, yeah, like I think just the idea of like, I think like binding kind of implies something that's a little bit less uh, w like under your control. But I like this idea of like uh, familial or like partner bonds. So that's pretty yeah. cool to me. Points. Um, speaking of like a different type of or like a kind of uh, how do you call it a bond that you take on yourself i think um there was two uh designs that we had for this next concept which is being bound by honor and this design is actually our only green design i think that was submitted i think the first day with harvest kind of monopolized all the green designs and yesterday and today <laughs> kind of kind of in a dearth of them but it's honor bound which is an aura which when it enters the battlefield you draw a card and it gives enchanted creature plus two plus two and trample, but prevents all damage it would deal to creatures. I think this is super cool, particularly because of the trample. Like, the idea that like if, if there's like some, uh, you can like throw creatures in front of it, and they won't die because it won't deal damage to them. But um, if you uh, if you manage to like uh, trample, like you can like trample over them and deal damage to its controller, and also. If they if they have no creatures, obviously, you can do, you just swing for the hills. So it's a very powerful over I think or very very powerful stat powerfully statted aura, but with a flavorful drawback that I like. It reminds me kind of of the uh, the cycle of auras from that one commander product where it's like you can enchant it, but it can't attack you or planeswalkers you control. So you can you're encouraged to put them on opposing things. Kind of similar to kind of similar in flavor to that, but balanced for one v one. Yeah, the Vow of Cycle, which is very much similar named. Um, yeah, this is great. Uh, you can imagine this person is de delivering the non-lethal blows to get past uh, all their all the henchmen in the way, just to do what they get to the person they actually need to slay. Uh, it's 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 cool that I feel more comfortable with this type of effect encouraging to uh getting a voltron happening and whatever limited this is without a feeling like you're gonna either get blown out or they're gonna you're gonna blow them out it helps that there's a draw card though too i know that auras are inherently card disadvantage but yeah very cool gameplay mm -hmm. and yeah uh like i was mentioning earlier two cards talked about the idea of being bound by honor. The other one is honor bound Mikatl, um, a throwback to Alara. Um, one red and white for a cat warrior. It attacks each combat if able, and it gives other creatures you control exalted, which as we know was the Bant mechanic in the original Alara. As the shards collided, the codes of Bant found fertile ground among the passions of Naya. So just a pretty cool design. I, I really like the, the flavored throwback. Yeah, you're compelled to attack. You're the one that has to go fight on behalf of uh, the rest of your group. Uh, but your group supports you. They'll, they'll give you some armor, maybe give you some uh, some nice snacks for the road. Yeah, and like the Nikatals always were like, I think there's like the war pride. It was always like a very like collective society. So I like I like the shifting uh, flavorfully. And speaking of Bant, someone else also submitted a, a Bant design that's like that even calls out Bant in the name. Uh, do you want to read it off for us? Yeah, it's Bant Binding Mage. Two white, blue, two four. Whenever you cast an aura spell, you may pay one. If you do, tap target creature. So this is a great tight design. Because when you're encouraging casting auras, you uh, 
want the opposition to be tapped down with creatures because most of your auras are going to be creature auras. You don't have to, but with the this on the battlefield, the emergent gameplay is you may want to be casting like protection spells on your own creature, and that just lends itself naturally to oh, I am going to keep casting these each turn, building up uh, ones that benefit this two for, and then you happen to be tapped down each turn that I keep doing this. Yeah, and there's also probably like some niche things like, hey, you're in band, so you probably have green aura, so I'm just going to get myself some fixing or ramp and also just tap down your thing so I can swing in for a little bit. Oh, you're coming at me with two creatures? I'll just capture sphere one of them and tap down the other. Like, lots of little cool things you can do with this. Okay, so I've rambled on for a bit about some cards I like. What are some of the ones that you enjoyed? <laughs> well, let's, uh, in the theme of white, blue, and, and another faction on another plane, the Arbiter of New Prov. So this one is got a bunch of abilities. Here we go. It's flash flying when it uh, has 3 3 and it has bind 2. When it enters, when this creature enters the battlefield, tap up to two target creatures you don't control. And then whenever you bind a creature, you gain two life. Okay, so uh, two things about bind here. Uh, the ability to bind, uh, this goes to what you were talking about in the beginning of this, where one of the first things to think about is wa water nodding. So uh, tapping down things in a bind way makes a lot of sense, but the that's the gameplay feel, but the flavor feel from here is very much well in line with the Azorius, with Law Magic, uh, is what is doing the binding down. Uh, and that's a binding contract or whatever, binding law. That's So very good marriage of um, gameplay flavor, but also um, the factional flavor. Yep, and as I was mentioning yesterday, um, this was also designed by Mako, who is the return set guy so no surprise that they came back with another uh, existing plane flavored card i think it's a pretty good one. i like the i i, I was kind of lukewarm on the idea of bind at first but i think the idea of just because it was like oh okay tapping a creature why would you need to keyword that but then i think if you have lots of effects that key off when you bind a creature um it, you, you can like make that matter in a way that can lead to some interesting decisions I almost wonder if, like, um, instead of a number, you would want, like, bind a per... Like, hmm, maybe not bind... Like, or just make it, like, any non-land permanent just to give it a little bit more utility. I don't know. The, because I know with the... Because I, I know that, like, you can uh, technically detain non-land permanents, if I remember right, so... The, yeah, that was more on the, on like, higher rarities, and they kept it to just creatures on commons. Yeah, so yeah, maybe not uh, in general, but I could definitely see bind being used in some interesting applications that way. Um, you're you're right about the technology of using simple um, rules text as keyworded, uh, because that last ability is whenever you bind a creature, right? It, if you imagine the alternative is whenever you tap uh, one or more creatures be uh, due to a creature entering the battlefield, gain two life. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of words. It's a mouthful. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Um, well, what's the next card you want to talk about? Uh, let's go to uh, Kikiro of the Golden Lock. Kikiro is a fairy rogue, 3-3 three, three flyer. Beginning of your upkeep, look at the top three cards of your library, then reveal a card from among them. If it's an aura, you can put on the battlefield attached to a creature an opponent controls if you don't put it into your hand. Okay, so this this is a very cool design because um, if you look at all the creature auras in Magic, um, blue and black have the tendency to have negative auras you put on your opponent's creatures. So choosing a blue and black for a commander design that encourages and rewards you for including a bunch of these in your deck is very cool. It makes me want to build a deck around this. Just windmill slam control magic on their commander. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. So there we go. There's already get brainstorming. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I actually I didn't think think of this for Commander at all, mainly because I think I saw this. Um, the person who made this is Canterbury Egg is making six cards a day for like a to end up with a set at the end of Moxtober. So I was thinking like the idea of blue black auras is something I don't remember seeing before. So it seemed like an interesting like archetype to explore because I feel like it's almost like the enemy thing to green white, which is the um, traditional enchantress color pair. Yeah, that's true. Um, fairy, the blue black fairies also makes me feel like uh, Lorwyn time Shadowmoor type of world. And if you can imagine if it is like the enemy of green white, maybe there's some mirror, like you get those subconscious uh, throwback feels to that world with this execution of auras. Mm, I know that the set uh, Aldri has oofs if, because uh, for harvest there was a green black oof tribal. So oh, so yeah, maybe some. I know that uh, Canterbury Egg has previously designed a set called Fields of Gold, which is uh, a kind of like fairy, like uh, fairyland type set. So maybe this mm. is set in that same space. I'd have to check up on the lore and stuff. But yeah. Yeah. Okay, so next up, I, again, it's it's Moxtober, so we're going to have to get some Mox designs in here. And <laughs> so we have Mox Binding. It's a Mox, but when it enters battlefield, you exile a permanent you control, and you add one mana of any color that card is or could produce, just in case it was a land. So, definitely plays in a weird space where you, you're going to have to sacrifice um, board presence so you can't really use this early. Um, there's probably something this is broken with that's like missing my, the top of my head. But off the top of my head, it feels like a, a fun mox and riff. Oh, yeah. Uh, this gives me feels of um, the imprint mox. Which one's that one? Oh, Chrome Mox. Yeah, yeah. That one requires a uh, a land payment, or sorry, not a land, uh, <laughs> a card payment as well. Yeah, it's it's kind of like the love child of Mox Diamond and Chrome Mox, except it's like, well, actually, play it first. Right. You, you don't. You don't get to. You're not only getting card disadvantage. You're getting board disadvantage and tempo loss as well. Yeah, it could have costed something to. Uh, exert that item on the battlefield first okay um tomb wrappings is what i want to bring up next so commons or simple designs are great this time it's a flash aura for one white as enchanted creature that attacked this turn or sorry Enchant creature that attacked this turn. Next line. Enchanted creature can't attack or block. Okay, so this is a uh, uh, in-between of pacifism and uh, doing the take vengeance uh, type of removal spell where you destroy a tapped creature. In this case, it's you're essentially destroying a tapped creature by punishing it. Uh, you have to care about when they attacked. Um, and as a result, you just pay a bit cheaper for needing to wait for the right timing. I think this is a great, elegant, simple thing. Yeah. This feels like a card that, like, I was like, wow, you're telling me this doesn't already exist? It should exist. Because, <laughs> like, you have Immolating Glare and Divine Arrow, you have Pacifism type effects. This just marries the two types of white removal just very elegantly. Yep. So this, I'm going to admit, I'm literally only mentioning this because I saw it uh, on the side because it has a similar, um, like it, it's Tome Binder and, and it was next to Tomb Wrapping. So I was like, oh yeah, that card is cool. It's Tome Binder, which is one white white for uh, a flash one two. When it enters the battlefield, you get a Tome Artifact token with when this artifact enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls until this artifact leaves the battlefield. So at three mana, this is actually like kind of scary because it's a um, 
not stat wise, but it's generally a better uh, fiend hunter in that they can't really just kill it to get back their creature. Um, creature removal is obviously much more common than artifact removal, so you can kind of and since it has flash, you can just play tome binder, exile one attacking creature, throw it in front of another creature, and trade, and suddenly you've like you've two for one them pretty cleanly. So yeah, this is a very powerful design. And again, we were talking yesterday about loving all the different types of uh, uh, new mm -hmm. artifact tokens. I don't know that this one can be as widely applied because it's really strong, but I still love it. Yeah, yeah, there's not a lot, like, applying a bunch of tomes everywhere. It'd probably have to require a set that cares about <laughs> exiling a bunch of stuff. Um, but yeah, this is just flipping things over to oblivion ring from having to have enchantment removal to having to have artifact removal so that's cool uh speaking of tomes or books or even binders it's binder of horrors that's what i want to bring up two and a red or not two and a red two and a black two two um four you pay four black tap exile a creature card in your graveyard Create a colorless artifact token named Tome that has all the abilities of the exiled card. Flavor text here is on each page a day of a monster's life. So this is a horrible book <laughs> that does things. There's that trope of like a cursed, um, yeah, I guess Tome, but yeah, a, a thing that you find and it does does these things that's really bad. Uh, so I, I thought this was uh, neat to have like, I, I'm imagining... Uh, you, you're just flipping over uh, your collected pages of all your different monsters. Uh, I guess, uh, what is it, Bestiary? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and it's just like, again, another cool artifact token type. Um, and it just, it just feels like a very flavorful design. You're essentially uh, documenting that creature and like learning from its like history. It feels very, like, this is, this is interesting because flavorfully it almost feels like, because um, we were talking about archaeology before in the Beacon of Creation server, um, and that kind of how uh, historic was mainly in blue-white, and then green cares about nature in the past. But I also like this interpretation of kind of the exploring the past or and, like, in, like, a studious fashion instead of the more, like, practical way that uh, black usually does it but it still has a bit of that pragmatism in there yeah you're um like white may be more interested in trying to recover things because they belong in a museum whereas black uh may be seeking power from the things it's looking in the, in the past i uh interesting that the you you have multiple tomes when you do this uh, so that I guess you can imagine they're all different pages and you can keep flipping through from page to page rather than, I guess, keep adding on to a one tome that you can have that you would only be able to do like one activated ability at a time, maybe. For yeah, like, like a, a mass, like imagine a mass, but instead you're amassing a tome. I was, yeah, I was, I was just about to say that, like, uh, um, something like a mechanic where it's like, um, create a token that's a copy of this and add it to your tome, and you and like a tome, a tome is just like a, a a tracking thing for pages, and you can add pages in different ways. I think that would be super cool, and like a as like a, a a pretty parasitic, but like I think in a, in a powerfully flavorful set mechanic. Yeah. Um. If I remember right, there's one more designer who did uh, who interpreted binding as being related to books. You want to talk to us about that card? Are you talking about mine? Maybe. Ah, oh, jeez, oh, you are. Yeah. Okay, here we go. I, I made a mechanic called Spellbook. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it sounds very familiar. Building a tome. Uh, this one is a split card um, on one half. Uh, it's learn. And uh, it says you may discard a card. Uh, then you, if you discarded a card this turn, draw two cards, exile, learn. And then the other right side half is cook. 
it says cook deals three damage to each opponent exile cook and then the fuse style uh, bar at the bottom uh, has this mechanic spellbook you may cast this from exile by discarding a non-land card so you can uh so it's basically like as long as you have a non-land card you can keep playing one half or one half of this right I mean, like, yeah yeah you're turning I think, like and i like how learn digs for more uh non-land cards to cast and you can just keep cooking <laughs> yeah 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 that's true i uh just finding new recipes it. Yeah, I I was thinking about naming conventions and what kind of effects and trying to pair the two. And I, I got inspired by Spellbook being about a book. And I was like, cookbook. <laughs> and so this is a sort of learning from a book type of theme names uh, for these effects. Mm -hmm. There's a set called Tuluria on the custom magic server that also has a mechanic called Spellbook. But it's a little different. Oh. It's like an adventure variant, except you can cast it once each turn it's on the battlefield. So it's kind of like this card, this creature's signature move. So it's kind of like an oh, activated... Cool. Yeah, it's like an activated ability, but then the set has like a strong... It's it's like a spells matter set, and it's focused on like astrology and astronomy and that kind of stuff. So having an activated ability that can also proc your um, uh, prowess uh, or non-creature spell stuff is super valuable in that limited. Uh, perfect yeah that's a good environment to like spells matter it's to have that okay. okay what's uh what's your what's your card oh so i'm not super excited about mine this week mechanically but i think i like where i went in terms of flavor it's fighters binding which we're going to see here in a sec which is an equipment that uh, if an equipped creature, creature would be dealt damage, prevent one of the damage. If a equip, equipped creature would deal damage, it deals that much damage plus one instead. So I was inspired because I was like, I, like I mentioned, I had like I had expectations of what people would bring to the table in terms of like flavor. And as I've mentioned before, I'm a masochist and a hipster, so I wanted to try to do something different flavorfully <laughs> from those. Um, and I was like, yeah, I loved like those bandages that you always see, like Rock Lee is the most classic example always has oh, yeah. this taijutsu and it's both to like um uh, increase the impact of your blows but also to cushion your own bones so I, I tried to incorporate that here but i think ironically um if someone mentioned that the creatures that are most likely to use it use this are the ones that are like pingers so it actually pr it's actually promotes equipping this to non-combatant creatures so i was like no the mechanical flavor Oh, oh yeah. I guess you could just add a if it would deal combat damage, then you're now you're you fixed it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's cool that you went for. Um, usually, the binding down of of people is the whole person and to someone else that we've seen with these cards. Uh, this is a self imposed binding, which can be very helpful. I mean, there's like compression pants, you know. It's very useful to bind uh, some parts of yourself sometimes. Yeah, just like the idea. Yeah, I, I like the idea of like binding as like a protection or like as a form of like yeah. Like actually, I'm surprised we didn't see any like medicinal binding. That would be that would have been really cool, like a uh, like yeah. a poultice or something, or a yeah, uh, on a cast. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the name? Uh, tourniquet, right? I, I that would be interesting. <laughs> I, I, but maybe a little bit too. Uh, what do you call it? A grizzly for magic, magic oh. flavor. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I think I have uh, like two or three more cards I want to talk about. What about you? Uh, yeah, I have at it. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about uh, a card that I really like. It's a riff on uh, Commander. Marisol, so it's and I I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of that, but Marisol's Ring of Binding. It's an equipment, and whenever a equipped creature dies, you exile it, and you can make equipped creature become a copy of a card exiled with Marisol's Ring of Binding. So, it obviously references uh, the abilities of the commander uh, Marisol, who does a similar thing, um, and I just I I love this on like a micro level of like 
it's an equipment that doesn't actually matter the first time so you can cast it super cheap but then uh, over time you can kind of like build it into this toolbox of annoying creatures like a, like I, a uh... yeah like imagine like you you get a creature with hexproof under this trade it in combat and suddenly you can uh, hold up a single mana to keep making it hexproof or give it lifelink as a combat trick lots of like weird stuff you can do with it yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, let's see. Death Touch, uh, Double Strike, and Hexproof might be a deadly combo. Yeah, I think I'd love to see if there's a variant of this that does the. Can't remember the name. It's an it's an oh, ooze that, that becomes a copy of like, or gains all abilities of creatures. Um, is oh, it, like here, creatures exile this way. That would be a crazy thing. Here, here's a here's a cool like. Uh, I, I'm getting like anime scene type of thing going on here where have a first strike that you copy um and get into combat and uh strike it to to somebody that would normally kill you and then uh they also have or let's see if they live <laughs> then you then switch back to your uh indestructible creature you also have exiled uh although i guess that's hard to die when you're indestructible. okay all right it's coming apart but it'd be cool to just to be able to do a strike and then like switch back to your indestructible form and then keep switching back and forth uh, definitely anime flavor of like all my fallen friends fight with me kind of thing ah. um and continuing the theme of uh legendary or legendary characters from magic nahiri's binding stone which appropriate considering ZNR just came out. It also has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, exile up to one target non-land permanent and opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. So really powerful. It definitely needs some uh, startup to get going, but this thing can eat multiple permanents. But if there are three or more cards exiled with it, um, you have to sacrifice it and it deals four damage to each opponent. Also notably, um, you can just stall this at two and because it says up to one target non land permanent. So you, ah, you, don't, you don't have yeah. to crack this, so it has that extra level of versatility. That's pretty good. That's cool. Uh, I guess there's that story here of uh, the Hedrons not holding forever. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I'm going to be fully honest. I do not actually keep up too much with the ZNR story, but that sounds like... From what I've heard from other people, that sounds like it scans. I I haven't read that yet as well, but I'm not opposed to to reading it. Uh, but uh, I'm just yeah, talking. I'm, actually, about I'm, ex I'm excited escaping. about the Return of Magic story. To be like, you can see me like geeking out about flavor and stuff. And I think I got into custom design because I was like, well, as an adjacent thing where I was like, there's there's so many cool arts out there. I want to like make um, uh, cards for them because I think like there's a there's a flavor here, and I think. I feel like lots of times, like, how much magic, if magic's flavor is important, is something that I think some custom designers forget. And it's just like, and I, I, I like, I mentioned I, yesterday, I love to see designs which, it, without needing, like, flavor text or art, can still convey the strong feeling of, like, yeah, okay, I get what this is trying to convey to me. I think mm -hmm. lots of the submissions we get for this Moxtober do that. Like it, it's like really well. Yep. And I think with that, those are all the cards I wanted to talk about. Do you have any others? Uh, the how about one one last one here with the War Bond Revenant. This was a Skeleton Knight, three two, first strike. When it attacks, you can exile a Soldier Knight, Berserker, or Warrior from your graveyard. When you do, it gets plus two, plus two, and gains lifelink. The um, pulling from the graveyard is thematic to the fact that this is a skeleton, but also it's a skeleton knight, so you, you can imagine that this war bond, I guess it's uh, very dedicated to the cause, and perhaps its fellow uh, teammates have, have fallen, but they're still going and it literally till death and then beyond they're they're now a skeleton and still good doing stuff yeah it comes back around to those honor bound cards that we saw earlier 
that like yeah yeah mm -hmm. bound by uh i guess uh what is i guess this is also a mor is it morality thing dedication mm -hmm. which is yeah so it feels very white in that regard mm -hmm. nice yeah. grouping of types Mm -hmm. Yeah, like this kind of batching feels, and I think the Berserker in there is like a nice touch to me because I think um, while they are usually in red, I think that the Berserkers we've seen are also like, they have like clans and they're fiercely loyal to that. So I think uh, the idea that they're on the same level as soldiers, knights, and warriors in terms of like their dedication to whatever battle they're fighting, I like that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've seen some Black Berserkers recently as well. Like that Minotaur from Theros Beyond Death. Oh yeah, and like Mardu, I think is like 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 the actual clan Mardu is like the the pinnacle of Berserker flavor, and obviously <laughs> has black in there. Yeah. Okay, and I think with that um, we can wrap this one up. So thank you all for watching. Um, I'll have an MSC set file of all of the cards we discussed today, and then some. Um, We'll also have a link to the Beacon of Creation Discord server, which you should join if you want to discuss some of these Moxtober cards, and also a link to the Moxtober prompt list if you want to make one. On the day that this video is coming out, it's going to be day five, so the prompt is Curio. So be sure to post it on Twitter with the hashtag MTGMoxtober. If you're in a custom medic Discord, post it there with uh, Moxtober somewhere in your message, or post it on Reddit with Moxtober in the title. And then we'll find it and maybe even talk about it in the next video. Um, uh, clarification, you said Curio, you meant, you meant Cynic. Oh, well, yeah, that was me being dumb. Cynic. Cynic is the prompt, not Curio. <laughs> um, oh. And yeah, so, and as of recording, today's prompt was Smog. So we'll come back tomorrow to discuss that. But until then, this is Caillou and Bradley signing off. See ya.